Hi, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Studio. So, hope everyone is doing good and staying safe. So, in this video, I will be basically focusing on a few tips, mainly three tips that can be useful while doing your quantity takeoffs. I am concentrating these tips for MEP services quantity takeoff. So, this is very useful for MEP quantity surveyors when they are doing the quantity measurements. So before moving to the video, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe for more quantity serving related videos. Please share it with your friends who are into this profession. Do share it with your friends who are planning to move into this profession. Do like, please put up your comments, valuable comments, so that it will be useful for me to improve the contents that I am putting through this channel. So without further delay, let's move into the three tips that can be very useful for you during the pre-contract stage while carrying out the MEP services quantity takeoff. So the first tip is mainly focusing on what is not there in drawings. So usually, how do we do a quantity takeoff? Mainly that is from the drawings. There are a lot of elements, lot of ancillaries that may be not shown in a drawing and with experience you will need to understand that such items will be coming in a construction project such items will be used in every building be it an electrical system mechanical system or a plumbing system there are few small ancillaries like valves then dampers so such items will not be mostly some drawings it will be shown yes so it basically depends on the designer or the draftsman who has made this drawing so sometimes they don't usually include these items inside the drawing so it is we as a quantity surveyor who needs to understand that such items is required without which the complete system will be useless so we'll need to calculate the quantities for these items also that is not there in the drawings so what happens is that such details are mostly mentioned as a general not in every drawing they don't include it inside the design part but as a general not it will be mentioned that such and such item will be coming here so you need to take the quantity of that we need to not only concentrate on what is there inside the system but also need to look if there are any special notes or general notes that is being included in that drawing so most of the time as a quantity survey we might overlook it we might not read through it so the first step is to read the general notes if it is shown in the drawings and even if it is not shown in the general notes with experience, we will need to understand that there are some small items, ancillaries that needs to be measured and included under the costing part. So these items are also very important while costing the entire project. So if you miss out these items, then a proper budget of that project cannot be prepared. A good cost consultant will always know about these items. So I'll show you a drawing to understand how these general notes are mentioned so if you see this drawing here if you see there are some general notes mentioned this is the legend drawing of uh, electrical system not only about the general answer item sometimes like if you see here all final distribution boards shall be installed at a height of at a height not exceeding 2.2 meters again another general note if you see here all cables crossing from one floor to the other and between fire combined should be properly closed with fire stopping material so these items cannot be shown in a drawing but the costing of these materials also needs to be included while preparing the total budget of the project here another point is mentioned all lighting switches and socket outlets shall be installed at 125 centimeter and 45 centimeter above finished floor level so again you get an idea of how much measurement should be done for the wirings or the conduits now this is a general note for a plumbing system so again 
a lot of points are mentioned here. So if you see here, provide an air vent at the top of all risers in water system. So this will not be shown in the drawing, but you will need to prepare the costing for air vents for all the risers also. See, provide hose and drain valves at the bottom of all risers and low points. Another point which might not be shown in the drawings. Here, hose pipes to be provided throughout the parking garage area and in mechanical rooms for maintenance purposes. So again, you need to assume some hose pipes in these areas mentioned here. Now, this is a general knot of an HVAC system. Again, if you go through it, see, provide motorized isolating dampers at all intake. Then duct branches to be provided with volume dampers and fire dampers as required, whether shown on drawings or not. Again, it is clearly mentioned here that if it is not shown also, we need to consider volume dampers and fire dampers in every duct branches. You have to do the costing of this dampers. Then the fire dampers have to be provided in all duct work penetrating fire rated walls in accordance to the NFPA requirements. So wherever the duct is passing through walls, fire dampers should be measured and the measurement should be included in the BOQ and for the costing purpose. Then regarding flexible duct length, it shall not exceed 1500 mm in length. Again, another important point to be noted. Then the cladding duct jacketing shall be provided to all exposed insulated ducts on roof and in technical areas. So hope you understood what I meant by saying that the things that needs to be included which is not shown in drawing. So there are many, many small, small elements that needs to be included which might not be shown in drawings which can be shown in general notes like I have shown you right now. Sometimes again, even in the general notes, it might not be shown. So that comes with experience and reading through the specifications and even asking the client whether these things needs to be included. For example, if nothing is mentioned about jacketing even in the drawing specification. So as a consultant, if you are making the BOQ, if you are doing the budget preparation, you are costing, then you can ask the client or you can even advise to them that jacketing is really required for exposed area because that is a standard. So then the client will tell, okay, you can include it. We'll change the documents, the project specifications accordingly. So this is another important responsibility of a consultant also. With experience, you can advise what items or elements have been missed by the design team. Now the second important point or important tip that can be used for the quantity measurements to find the riser length. So you know that in a MEP system, you have risers. It might be a bus duct going throughout a building, cables or containments or the ducts or the pipes. So mostly what we do is we just assume a floor to floor height might be 3 meters or 4.5 meters. So you just assume something like that. But sometimes even there are times when a QS might miss out measuring those risers, which is very, very important. As an MEP QS, when you do the quantity takeoff, you will be only concentrating or you will be only focusing on the folders which has the MEP drawings. But when you get a folder of that project, just go through the architectural drawings. You will have some drawings where the building section will be provided, the sectional drawings of that building. So from there, you can easily get the right height of that building. Floor to floor height of that building, you can easily get from these architectural drawings. So if you see here, this is a architectural drawing. See, it is clearly mentioned what height is for each floor. So this is ground floor, first floor, roof. So from these drawings, you can easily calculate the correct floor to floor length and use that for your riser measurements. So it will become more accurate rather than just assuming a certain height for every floor. You have this clear measurements given. So easily you can go through it, open the architectural drawings to find out where the section drawing is for the building and you can calculate the riser for your MEP system easily. Now the last point is mainly focusing on the plumbing system. You know that in your plumbing system, in your toilets, for your wash basins, for your WCs, 
and all your sanitary fixtures the pipe comes and it, there will be a drop for that pipes so most of the time these drops are not calculated by the quantity survey they just miss it out so sometimes they just assume certain length for all the different sanitary fixtures but again if you just go through the architectural drawings there will be detailed toilet drawings available in it the drawing is mainly meant for the finishing purpose of different toilets but again the lengths will be given there from that you will get an idea of the heights of the different sanitary fixtures so from there you can easily measure the drops of each sanitary fixture so here also you need to look into the architectural drawings so if you see here these are the sectional drawings of different toilets so if you see you have the different measurements given so you'll get a bit of idea here at what distance is the different sanitary fixtures from the ceiling or from the floor and from this drawings you can get a better accuracy in your calculating the props so hope these three tips will be useful for you when you do your next quantity takeoff so this just comes with experience where to find what that is the main idea behind these three tips with experience when you do a lot of quantity measurements you will also understand where you can find some items which are actually required but missing in the drawings thanks a lot for watching this video Hope it was informative. Take care. Keep learning. Stay safe. Bye.